Okay, good morning. This is Dan Leonard, and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about a meeting I was at this week with some of the top financial companies and managers uh, in the country, and they shared a lot of the information that they were looking at for what they're using to make their decisions. So again, this is uh, the PG&E Retirement Show. I'm Dan Leonard with Marathon Retirement Planning. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, Dan Leonard uh, with PG&E Retirement Show, uh, hosted by Marathon Retirement Planning. We go live on Facebook each week at 11 o'clock on Mondays, uh, and then we post re uh, replays up on our YouTube channel uh, where they're available there and on other social media channels that we run. So I appreciate you uh, tuning in, and as I said, I want to jump in and kind of just give you a little recap on some of the Key points uh, I learned last week, Thursday and Friday, I was at some meetings in Kansas City with an investment management company we used to get some research from. And we had people from JP Morgan, Principal, Double Line Financial, LSA Portfolios, all sharing their outlooks on the market. Um, and there were some interesting facts that jumped out. Obviously, this is not an attempt to try to tell you how to manage your portfolio, but just some things that I kind of sat back and said, that's an interesting number. I think people could benefit from knowing about that statistic. So first, the people from JP Morgan were very concerned about the low volatility in the market. What they had uh, shared with us was a chart that shows the last 37 years, 28 of those 37 years had a positive return. And in those 28 years, the average intra-year decline was 14%, meaning at some point, even though we were up for the year 5% or 15% or whatever that number was, that we saw a 14% decline during the year. This year, we're on track to have another positive year, and through almost the end of October now, the largest intra-year decline has been 3%. So what they were talking about with that statistic is essentially you've seen a reduction in the amount of volatility we have and that's not always a good thing because what happens is people become overconfident or overextended in certain areas that are more volatile than normal and when the volatility returns they tend to see those portfolios fluctuate a little bit more than they're normally comfortable with and that's what uh, when the people at principal got up on stage and talked about they were looking at recessionary models. So they run a recessionary model that has 19 different indicators in it. Each one of those indicators is a different po point to a different part of the economy. And what they had said historically, even in good times, two or three of those indicators point towards a recession. Now that doesn't mean we're gonna have a recession, but it just means you know, not everything is rosy. Well, in the last several months, all 19 are positive. And to try to give you an analogy, uh, you know, it's kind of like watching a horror movie in the uh, 90s where, you you know, you see the, I guess, the, the teenager walking downstairs into the basement, the power doesn't work, and you hear noises, and you're like, oh, this person's going to meet their end, and it turns out to be the dog, or it turns out to be something else, right? That's what they're saying is because we don't know when the next recession is going to happen because nobody can accurately predict that when everything is flashing green, no problems on the horizon, that makes money managers really nervous because when everything's gonna be, you know, is rosy, that's when people start saying, yep, things are starting to get overextended. They've not seen the volatility in the market that we normally see. And so it doesn't mean that, you know, an end is near, but it is that, you know, moment of suspense of how long can this continue for before something happens? You know, when you have an indicator or a, a model that has 19 indicators that normally some are saying something's on the horizon and none of them are, that's cause for concern for most money managers. Um, the folks at Double Line were talking about the deficit. Uh, currently, the deficit is growing. That is unusual in a time of expansion. So normally when the economy is growing, you don't see the deficit growing. But right now we see that happening. And they said they could see the deficit grow to as much as 150% of GDP without inflation. Now, you know, does that necessarily mean we have a problem on our hands? Again, not necessarily, but anytime the deficit gets up, up above 100% of GDP, at least in the past, it's cause for concern. We're not there yet, but again, at the rate we're going, they see that could become a problem down the road. Uh, and then finally, the folks at LSA, which are, is the research company we use, pointed out some interesting statistics. And at first you're gonna say, 
what's so interesting about that. And from 2007 to 2012, companies that had positive earnings growth outperformed companies that did not have positive earnings growth. Now that doesn't sound like revolutionary thinking, but what happens is in that five year period from 2012 or 2007 to 2012, the outperformance was in the neighborhood of 300%. Today, since 2013 to now in 2017, the difference between companies with positive earnings and companies with negative earnings is very small. It was like 20 or 30%, which means essentially it doesn't make a difference whether you're buying a company with good or bad earnings, you're getting growth. And does that make a difference? Well, if everything continues to go up, no. But as they pointed out, which companies are likely to correct first when the market does turn over? Are the companies that have good solid earnings and are growing going to go down or are the companies that have been having poor earnings but still seeing growth in their stock price going to be the ones to correct? So, you know, a few takeaways from it uh, that, that I took from these four managers is nobody can determine when this expansion is going to end. Now, everybody had reasons to be concerned about it, but everybody could also turn around and point to a reason why the market was going to continue to grow. And ultimately, every manager got up and admitted they think this could continue to be and go on to be one of the longest expansions we have. But in the next breath, they were saying, we wouldn't be surprised if that changed. So really what it means is don't give up on diversification. There is a correction coming. We don't know when that's going to be, but when it does, the people that have followed the fundamentals, have not ignored diversification or have not overreached are the like ones that are likely to be the best protected. Doesn't mean that their portfolios won't go down, but what it does mean is hopefully those portfolios don't go down as much. And that's really the way when we're out there trying to help somebody, we're trying to protect your downside more than trying to keep pace with the market and the upside because we've all seen the way statistics work. You know, if you go down 20%, you don't have to go back up 20 to get to whole. You have to go up 25 to, to get back to whole. So the less you go down, the better in the long run your overall return is because we're all going to participate to the upside. Just the way we're managing money, it may not be as much as some of the people that are taking more risk. But then, again, on the flip side, when the market goes down, if we don't go down as much, it all works out. So... Again, everybody can make a case for why this will or won't end. The key is make sure you're still comfortable with the amount of risk you're taking. And with that, again, every week we kind of make an offer for, you know, what could we do to, you know, give you a complimentary consultation on something. If you'd like to evaluate the risk or the level of risk you're taking in your 401k or your portfolios outside of that, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to put a link here on the screen. If you go to that link, you can go to my online calendar and book a time to talk to me. Again, it's a complimentary. Uh, it's scheduled for 15 to 30 minutes uh, on the calendar. You can book a time. I'm happy to talk with you. If you'd prefer to just give me a call, you can reach me at 925-726-401K. Or if uh, you're an email person, feel free to reach out to me by email. And again, thank you for watching. I appreciate uh, those of you that have called in. And then also, uh, if you'd like to share these videos with other people that uh, work at PG&E so they can benefit from seeing this show and the valuable information we're trying to pass along, we'll, we certainly appreciate that. And next week, we'll go back to talking about a specific PG&E retirement plan. I just thought uh, after coming back from the meeting this week, it might be good to give you guys some other information that would be useful in planning for retirement as well. Thank you very much and have a great week.